Um, all right, uh, so let me go and get uh, started. Uh, my presentation is if they can build it, will they come? Using artifacts and ecofictions to teach the past. And what I plan on doing today is discussing how I use replicas of artifacts and ecofacts to teach archaeology to diverse audiences, including members of the public whose interest in the past ranges from indifferent to enthusiastic. Uh, following the classic Bidfordian tradition of making up my own words when perfectly good words exist, uh, by calling replicas of artifacts artifictions, and similarly rep uh, replicas of ecofacts ecofictions. Um, the Virgil Curation Laboratory, which I run, uh, relies very heavily on Virginia Commonwealth University or VCU's undergraduate students who work as volunteers, interns, or on independent research projects. We partner with cultural heritage institutions, museums, and research facilities throughout the eastern U.S. in our efforts, uh, notably George Washington's Ferry Farm, Mount Vernon, uh, 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 Jamestown Rediscovery, James Madison's Montpelier, and the Virginia Museum of Natural History. Our artifacts and ecofictions begin as digital models created using a 3D laser scanner on actual objects, many rare or unique, as opposed to imaginings of historical items that are born digitally. Uh, you can see cut marks on this forced tibia that indicate removal of flesh for consumption during the starving time at Jamestown during the winter of 1609 to 1610. Uh, we use 3D printers uh, to create our plastic replicas, and I have very talented VCU students, uh, fortunately, uh, that paint them to enhance their verisimilitude. Our most active partner with integrating artifacts and ecofictions into outreach is Jamestown Rediscovery. Uh, here we have a replica of a butchered dog mandible, which I can pass around after, after we're done, uh, that we present uh, the starving times to the public. So they want to talk about cannibalism, but uh, showing a cannibalized person uh, was a little bit more challenging for the public. Um, the actual bone itself is too fragile for this purpose. For Jamestown and interpretive staff, we've created sets of artifacts and ecofictions that this compass to tell the story of a place important in America's history. Uh, we've produced uh, actually more than 10 sets of printed and painted artifacts and ecofictions that are used by Jamestown's interpretive staff, including sturgeon scoots, bird bones from Bermuda, an arrow point found in the leg of the first Englishman to die at Jamestown, and more. A uh, YouTube video uh, created by Jamestown traces an artifact from discovery in the field through conservation, 3D scanning and printing, and back to the field of public outreach. Uh, and if we can get on the web later, I'll, I'll show the video. It's got a really peppy soundtrack. <laughs> uh, digital model uh, models of artifacts and ecofacts can be reimagined in forms that are more familiar to non-archaeologists, uh, including things like chess sets, like made little chess pieces from Frozen Charlotte's and other dolls as well. Our chess sets of archaeology themed items have actually proven very popular with engaging uh, 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 school audience and other members of the public. Uh, we recently decided to play around, or I did decide to play around with making architectural bricks that are compatible with Lego. I want to make sure that nobody thinks that they're Lego. I don't want to get in trouble. Artifacts and Eco Fictions add a tactile component to portable pop up exhibits that we've created and are creating that can be readily placed in a wide range of venues with high traffic by the public. Uh, not everyone, however, finds our fictions or fictions of interest. Thank you very much. Oh,